Erisco Foods Limited has faced controversy and demands for a boycott on social media after arresting a customer for what they termed an unfavorable product review, which has now sparked outrage uh, from a number of Nigerians on social media. So just pretty much a, a summary here. The customer was arrested over a product review on Facebook. The FCCPC, the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, stepped in and issued a summons to Erisco Foods. There's no word so far from the Nigerian police, and the FCCPC has also secured uh, the release of that customer. Let's just take you through a quick timeline of, uh, of what's been happening. This, of course, started off with, uh, with a tweet um, that's from that individual, which essentially is what sparked this. And then we had a statement from um, the company, or rather, we can actually show you the product review from the uh, customer herself, which was screenshot on Facebook, where she talked about this tin of tomatoes, which she said had too much sugar. Then the company released uh, a statement saying that normally they would ignore it, ignore the statement, but then it was what they termed a malicious attack from their competitors, although they didn't mention who the competitors were. Then it was, we then found, heard that she had been arrested, and then we had tweets from the head of the FCCP, the vice chair and CEO, Mr. Babatunde uh, Irukara, where he said he had come to their attention and their learning of the circumstances. He then provided an update in another tweet saying that indeed they had confirmed that she was in fact arrested and they had transferred the case to uh, Abuja and by the police force. Then um, there were subsequently more interactions. This year, of course, uh, went viral. This for him saying that uh, we are abusive and excessive towards each other. People in government and police are picked from this pool of us all when someone was talking about how the police are being used for oppression. And then uh, again, he was then, this was the latest update, grateful for the restoration of Miss Egudi's liberty, but determined to ensure we never walk this path again. Criminality in commerce is an exception. Our society cannot endure under the threat or fear that fair expressions, when properly so, can become subject of law enforcement. Now, um, the Punch newspaper apparently got to speak with the spokesperson from Erisco Foods Limited, and uh, they did have a quote from them where they attempted to justify um, this arrest, saying that they went to the police under the guise of if there was any criminality. I hope we have the quote from the Erisco spokesperson. Okay, we don't have that quite yet, but we'll get that in a moment. But we do have, we're very happy to be joined by the Vice Chair and CEO of the uh, Competition Protection Commission, Mr. Babatunde Erukara, who of course comes with decades of legal experience uh, before joining the, the FCCPC, which of course includes that landmark, uh, discuss, landmark, discuss, um, landmark negotiation and also prosecution of a multinational pharmaceutical firm that was involved in clinical trials in Nigeria. I think we all know who we're talking about. Starts with a P. Sir, you're very welcome. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Good morning to you. Good morning, thank you. How, how did you get wind of this? Was it from that tweet or what, was it from complaints? No, no, from the tweets. Actually, we, um, we have tools for uh, uh, market surveillance just to find out uh, things that are happening in the market. And we have a dedicated uh, service provider who gives us those feedback multiple times a day. And I also make it a point to... Um, check uh, uh, social, media. social media yeah. and other uh, channels for gathering information. And I was actually traveling internationally, but I saw this. And it was a difference in time, but I got the whole team yeah. in the FCCPC onto it immediately. Can you talk, take us through the process after you, heard, after you found out about it to, to interacting with the police and finding out that she was in custody? And so when I found out about it, the uh, first thing I did was to try and do some quick desk research myself. And uh, I saw that I'd been tagged um, by multiple people that I needed to see this. And so my first response to that was, all right, this has come to our attention and we're uh, 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 engaging in some checks. And by this time I'd woken people up and uh, they were also looking uh, to see what, what was going on. And early in the day, the very next day, uh, we had a team um, led by the head of our Lagos office who tracked the information to Ogudu police station to uh, and determine that she was indeed arrested, but um, she had been transported away from the station en route to Abuja at the time. And I mean, we felt we had the responsibility to at least keep people informed. And so we informed people that, yes, we can confirm she's been arrested. We're trying to determine her 
location. And once we knew she was headed to Abuja, we had a head office in Abuja begin to engage the uh, police headquarters even before uh, the subject arrived Abuja. We also were able to track family members, including a spouse, and we opened conversations with them and uh, continued the engagement. Can you tell us, you issued a summons to Erisco Foods Limited. So, so the summons was for them to what? To explain what was going on? Tell, talk to us about that. And so typically, when there are consumer protection or competition issues, we would generally open an investigation. And the reason, and, and the investigation can start by one of several ways. One of them is to issue an NCI, what is what we call a notice to commence an investigation. It could be by summons. Sometimes it's by securing a search warrant from a court and ex executing a done read. Uh, in, this, in, this instance, in this instance, we thought an immediate summons for immediate appearance, bringing documentation, was going to be important. There were two things we needed to determine. First, to determine if uh, the scope and extent of the expression by the author of the post was fair, uh, fair speech. And we also needed to determine what role uh, Erisco had in, um, in the arrest of the consumer. And so Erisco was the right person. And so we issued a summons and a summons to produce documents and to appear, uh, which Erisco immediately honored. They came in the next day with a bunch of documents and, um, and some testimony. Okay. So, I, I mean, so what happened? Because, you know, I assume there, there are penalties and, um, you know, fines for breaching competition, you know, law. I mean, you, you can help me with that. Is that going to be the case here? What's going to be the outcome now? So the, the, the investigation is still at its early stage. Um, so the, I mean, for instance, the, the statement alleges anti-competitive conduct. And so we're going to look at that. Okay. Uh, for instance, they make a statement that um, uh, someone is uh, concerned about their dominance. And like, ah, dominance is a legal conclusion in competition terms. Um, we have no evidence that uh, Erisco is a dominant uh, a tomato paste maker or a food business at all from a competition standpoint. But those are things we would look at. We would slice the market into different segments and see if they dominate in any area at all. Now, with dominance comes certain responsibilities. You cannot act unilaterally. And so we we'll determine if a risk is dominant. We we'll determine they've acted unilaterally. And we would also investigate uh, their concern and allegation that there is a competitor who's trying to demarket their brand. We would conduct that investigation broadly. And the starting point is the information we've received from them. However, what was important immediately in the interim was determining whether Ms. Godi should be subjected to any criminal process. And the evidence we've had, including the testimony from Erisco, was sufficient for us to again follow up with the Inspector General to say that we have absolutely no reason to believe that she's engaged in anything criminal to warrant arrest or criminal investigation. And because to the extent that you say that there's a criminal defamation, who's the victim here? Right. A brand, a, a brand is not a victim for, uh, as an element of criminal defamation. So I think um, uh, uh, certainly Arisco was ill-advised to uh, consider pursuing uh, law enforcement with respect to this. What criminal conspiracy of a brand? Because um, uh, uh, damage of a brand is not criminal conspiracy. Anti-competitive behavior is primarily a regulatory issue. As a matter of fact, for anti-competitive behavior, uh, we have an in-house anti-competitive department. We have investigators, which are so made up sometimes of policemen, and we actually have the powers to prosecute in court. And so under no circumstances with a, a regulatory issue in commerce, something that should be added to a pretty large bucket of concerns that the police should have. Right, right. Okay, we, ha we have that quote now. And I was going to read it off my phone, but we have it. I want you to, because this speaks to what you just said now. The spokesperson was, uh, had an interview with the Punch newspaper. And uh, what, do you, what do you make of this? He, he said, this is Mr. Namdi Wokolo is his name. The allegations were grave, so we petitioned the police to investigate the matter. So if the police find criminal defamation against Chioma Egodi, this is the individual who had the post on Facebook, and then arrest her, is it a crime that we sought the law? Well, what's your response to that? Well, I mean, because I'm also an investigator and a regulator, so I, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm taking this as it comes, and so I'm maintaining my independence and not forming any opinion. But mm. a few questions that would arise in our investigation when Mr. Nwokolo sits in front of us. So when you talk about allegations, what allegations? I mean, who's there? Who, who, I mean, are you an investigator yourself? Are mm. you a law enforcement authority? Is there a risk or a regulator? I mean, you're not, because you're talking about allegations that you received. So you're the alleger here. And so when you say they're grave, I understand how you uh, feel they're grave, but uh, the question now becomes, when you have a complaint, where do you channel it? Now, when, um, 
people in society and make the errors of how to channel uh, their complaints, which is part of what we do in consumer education. That's understandable. But a company that large and sophisticated, you must have a full retinue of proper advisors, councils, and everything to understand where things should go. And certainly, I, we haven't seen anything, including from their conversations with us, we haven't seen anything that justifies a criminal investigation at this point. Now, does that mean there won't be? I don't know that there won't be. And uh, quite apart from the regulatory aspect of it, uh, you must also proceed with some level of caution. Uh, companies, whether they're their general counsel and their lawyers, they're risk managers. And a public relations person in a company is also a risk manager. You want to protect the brand, and the lawyer wants to pr uh, diminish potential regulatory or the risk. And so when you uh, see something, you must consider the best approach and how to proceed. I think it was ill-advised for the company to um, make such strong statements about what they considered uh, a, a criminal. And in any case, uh, the laws with respect to malicious prosecution are very clear. And so I would say, I mean, and I'm not the one who's going to prosecute or who's going to pursue a case in malicious prosecution, but if I were in-house counsel or outside counsel, I'd be very careful about articulating a statement in that manner. Because malicious prosecution is not just the police or the law enforcement or the prosecutors. It's also in part those who instigate it and whether there was any reasonable basis or factual a combination of facts that supported uh, the alarm or the allegations or the, or the report in the first place. Mm. And so you could be held accountable for even uh, making a report if ultimately it was found to be malicious and was found to trigger law enforcement or judicial process inappropriately. Okay. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm so glad that you're a lawyer with decades of experience. You've demonstrated it here. So can miss this individual in question, can she take legal action against um, Erisco Foods and the police? Because I am a regulator in this matter, right. uh, I would be, I, I, it, it would be wrong for me to provide legal advice. Right. But um, on a general uh, note, and the, the rubric of our tort law, uh, both from a case law, common law and legislation standpoint, um, yes, it is possible that uh, there might be potential theories of liability and a civil action. Mm. Um, what about the police in all of this? Uh, because it was almost like you assumed that role in, as, a, as an investigator, as a regulator. Maybe everybody was coming to you for this information. Meanwhile, within, what, what, you know, the, the question, of, so one, an official statement from the police. Two, your tweet about how Nigerians use, or rather, some, you were responding to a tweet from somebody else who said that Nigerians tend to use police to oppress others. Can you speak to that? Why haven't we heard from the police at this point? Well, so, so for me, um, the, the thing about this is that, so you look at the police force, and, and um, they receive all kinds of things. And if somebody says there's a criminal conspiracy somewhere, and the police act on it, I'm not talking about how quickly they did or didn't, or what, uh, whether that was uh, incentivized or not. I'm not even going to get into that. But we must hold people accountable. Police, to some extent, have a level of immunity by the nature of their role. Uh, so just imagine if a police, the police force didn't take an allegation seriously and it ended up in a catastrophic outcome, we would say that the police got it wrong. And so I will not, uh, I, 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 and sometimes the amount of discretion that is required and the judgment call uh, a law enforcement officer has to make are so critical and balancing all kinds of things. And so the greatest place where we need to modify behavior are those who would seek to use the law enforcement apparatus in matters that are truly not criminal. And that's my focus as a regulator. My, reg my role is to regulate commerce. I mean, I'm not going to regulate law enforcement. Right, the right. police doesn't come under my jurisdiction yeah, for yeah. regulation. So I won't get involved in that. But we will not be in this situation if someone didn't attempt to use the police for this purpose. Mm. Um, look, again, look, we, we thank you for the actions you've taken and how quickly, you know, this, this, um, uh, how quickly you, the FCCP you know, with your leadership has, has attended to this. Are there any sacred cows? I just, you know, when folks saw that we're interviewing you, there were all kinds of questions on social media uh, coming. So one of the questions I've been asked to, to ask you is, um, uh, are there sacred cows? If, if there are big billionaires with companies that are flouting competition laws, will you act? Well, let's put it this way. Um, I don't know if there are any sacred cows. I haven't met one. Mm. Um, in our work, we've, uh, whether in my role as a private practitioner before I got into government, certainly in my role in government, uh, we've confronted the small, we've confronted the big, we've confronted monopolies, we've confronted dominant businesses. There's a 
businesses have paid over $100 million in penalties mm. to the federal government on account of their anti-competitive or anti-consumer uh, behavior. And I would say every step of the way, the leadership that we've that I have had above me, I mean, I lead the agency, but I have political leadership above. You've got a minister, you've got the president, you've got a vice president, you've got all kinds of other people. Um, every step of the way, if there's ever been any question about what we're doing, what we've always been able to do is to present the facts, and there's never been a time when we're told to back down and not do our work. Mm. Mr. Babasunde Rukara, Vice Chair, CEO of the FCCPC, we thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about this. Yes, and we'll be, we'll be following the updates as they unfold. Thank you so much. You're a busy man, so we thank you for taking the time to come to talk to us. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much for inviting me.